Greetings, and welcome to The Richard Dolan Show, where every week we fight the good fight. My guest for this week is someone that, until recently, I had never known about, and indeed, he is not a public researcher. However, he does, in my opinion, qualify as someone with expert knowledge about one of the most important events in American history, and indeed in the history of the 20th century. That's the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. This man's name is Philip Lavelle. Philip met up with Tracy and me not long ago while we were traveling. Once we got talking, it was clear that this is a man who is up to date on everything of significance about the assassination. I asked him on the spot if he would consent to an interview, and he graciously agreed. This is the first time Philip has ever done an interview, and you have to keep in mind that all of what follows was done without him having any preparation time, which I'm sure he might have liked, but you would likely never know it just listening to him. This is a man who has spent much of his life investigating the JFK assassination. And although he hasn't published his research, he has interviewed several individuals connected to the event, communicated with many other researchers, and pretty much knows everything that's out there. Uh, This has been a wild ride for me, and Philip and I spoke for more than four hours total when we did this. I have done my best to prepare this interview in segments for broadcast. This is the first part, and it's all about Lee Harvey Oswald. Please enjoy this interview. Call them the JFK Sessions with researcher Philip Lavelle. All right, we're rolling. So I'm here with Philip Lavelle on the UFO cruise off of uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. We just met. We got together at dinner with Tracy, and you probably shocked everyone at the table with everything you knew about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. This has been a major thing for you. Yes, it has been. Yeah. And uh, uh, I had taken that turn uh, many years ago, uh, got very interested in uh, the t- topic, and they're very, the UFO topic and the JFA t- topic and how the government deals with, with it, those two converge. And there's very much uh, the similarities are there. I- I'm just going to say before we jump in, when I was talking with you the other night, I honestly felt as though I was, you were like uh, channeling the ghost of Jim Mars. Like you had, you had that much information and maybe more. I don't like to say more than Jim Mars because he wrote a definitive book on it, but your knowledge of this case was, was really amazing. And you haven't published anything about it. You're just doing this as private research. But I really think a lot of people would be interested in what you've learned about it. So why don't we just walk through it? Where, what's the best place to start by analyzing the, the events about Kennedy's assassination and the problems with it? We had a long conversation about Oswald. Do we start with him or do we go maybe somewhere else? Is there another thing that you want to uh, start with, with this whole JFK problem? I'd say starting with Oswald is a good start Mm -hmm. uh, because of who who Lee Harvey Oswald was, Uh, how the press and the government has portrayed him is completely the opposite uh, what all of the research shows. Uh, He Mm -hmm. was not a loser low life uh, who could barely hold a minimum wage job who had decided to defect to Russia uh, out of the Marines when he was uh, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, As you get into the background of him, uh, you find out it's a totally different story. Uh, They know for certain that he was trained and can speak Russia uh, Russian really well. Mm -hmm. And he was over in Atsugi, Japan, uh, during um, uh, the late fi- 50s, and that was is... Was born 19, what, 39? 1939, correct. Yeah, okay. Yep, 1930. So, so he, like in 1958-ish he, or so, he might have been in Japan? Uh, uh, correct, and okay. they had uh, found the, some of the records as well that seemed to indicate he was undercover at some point. He was picked up and obtained... Uh, 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 it was a sexual um, uh, a disease, I forget what it was, gonorrhea or he something. Picked up? He picked up while he was over there and it was written off as 
uh, ob d obtained during duty, so it was wiped from the record, and he was not chastised for it like what normally would have ha happened. So he had status. Uh, yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, Interesting. He and wasn't he was guarding? Uh, uh, was he guarding nuclear weapons? Uh, what, he, no, I thought it was a connection there, but maybe I'm no. The uh, the big connection that he had, he was the ra radar operator and had access to top secret uh, ra radar information, okay. uh, uh, which is how he got his top pre secret clearance. Uh, again, something you don't give a low life mm -hmm. uh, to, and you spent the time where he could speak almost fluent fluent Russian uh, at this time. That's so remarkable this, this because a, he didn't grow up in an environment where he was learning Russian, did he? No, nope. So he clearly picked it up very well. So he goes into the Marines and they fairly soon, I would imagine, identify him as someone very sharp and they start teaching him Russian. That's the job for people in intelligence. Uh, right from the beginning and he fits all of the intelligence uh, criteria. Mm -hmm. Very, very smart but not necessarily well-educated uh, and uh, ideal for undercover uh, type stuff where okay. you can pick up stuff very quick, uh, has a lot of you know, smarts uh, as far as uh, the street goes, uh, and he can pick up things very quick, and uh, you can use someone like that undercover better as opposed yeah. to someone who graduated from Harvard. Sure. Uh, and uh, does that so he, he was an ideal pickup I have a feeling when he went in the Marines he was already earmarked for that mm -hmm. uh, because of his relationship with David Ferry who he knew in New Orleans and uh, was part of the Civil Air, Air Patrol when he was uh, 14 and 15 year, years old. Yeah, Ferry's important anyone who saw the JFK movie knew that, that he was portrayed by Joe Pesci very important yeah. character in that but a CIA uh, asset, I guess, would you call Ferry? Uh, that's that they, good, yes. You know. yep. yeah, he worked both sides of the fence. He mm -hmm. worked uh, the mafia side of the fence, and he worked the CIA side of the fence. But those two were in, were in bed together uh, there in the early 60s. Yeah, it wasn't through, like through it was a 60s. conflict of interest, right. necessarily. So Oswald's in Japan, and then at some point he defects. Is it from Japan yep. that he defected to Russia? Uh, no, he had uh, come back and asked for a discharge from uh, uh, from the Marines, mm -hmm. uh, saying that his mother was sick. However, that really wasn't true, and they found out that the that the letters that he wrote, and the dates, and the f and the fact of when his m mother was supposedly sick didn't match up. They were wrong. So that is when he got the discharge, all part of a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, and just, just, just for the record, he never did technically ever defect and get all of the paperwork and go through. He was in the process of it, but he never did actually defect. That's one of those. Uh, but wasn't he ones. in Russia? I mean, yes. In the yeah. Oh, yes. He, he was over there for a while, for about a year, year and a half. Legally, without defecting. Without defecting, yes. The paperwork oh. never technically went through on him. That's something a lot of people don't. I never uh, knew know. that. Yeah. Yeah, yep, that is something. He never technically uh, did all of the paperwork that went through, whether that was by design or if there was a mix-up or something, but he had never technically defected. So he was in Japan, he comes back home, he's going through the discharge process. Was he, Get, was he discharged then? He, uh, yes. He was. And then he goes to the Soviet Union, which is, I would think, not easy. Uh, the way he do. got there was something that was very difficult, especially back in these uh, days there. You're talking about the Cold War. Right. Uh, and it was very difficult. He supposedly had a student type of visa and was going in through, uh, he got there by ship, uh, I believe, but something that you would, I mean, someone who was a uh, barely, uh, I mean, low education, et cetera, is suddenly doing all this stuff to get into Russia and where he did. It's, he's got the, the fingerprints of intelligence are all over this operation. I would think so. So he goes there and he's still like 22, uh, 23 maybe 30, years old. At, at best, well actually when he first got there, it must have been uh, 1960 uh, when he first got there. So he's 21. 20, 21. 
21, right. yep. goes there and goes through some process of defection, right. but it doesn't get completed? It is does that? not get completed. I, I, I forget exactly how that all went down, but <laughs> it was never completely w went through. And uh, at this time, uh, Lee, Lee Oswald was on the ra radar screen of J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, did you know there's a memo written by J. Edgar Hoover in 1960 that talks about Oswald uh, having gone to Russia, but they think someone is using his identity in the U U.S. And so the wow. fact that uh, uh, because later and a few years later after the assassination, uh, Hoover and the FBI feign they don't know anything about this Oswald guy. But they had been investigating yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, when this 1960 memo came in, it may have been like 1975. Like a lot of things in the UFO community, the, you don't get everything all at once. It comes yeah, out in years various and years things. Later. And so that's the uh, stuff. So he's on the ra radar screen. So may I ask you, the, the <clears throat> only viable theory I ever heard for Oswald defecting at all was as an intelligence operation anyway. Does this make sense? In other words, uh, the idea being the U.S. wasn't really able to get a lot of information out of the Soviet Union at that time. Uh, there were no defectors, my understanding, from like 1945 till the mid-50s. Then suddenly there's a few defectors of which Wa Oswald is one. And it always seemed to me that this theory was was um, logical that this was an effort by U.S. intelligence to put a few guys in the Soviet Union as defectors to see what they could get. Is that something that makes sense to you? You, you completely na nailed it. It is my, my understanding that's exactly the, as best some of the researchers can fi figure out, there was about 12 over the course of a few years, but, and they, and the, uh, the government finally admitted in 93 that there was such a defector program and they admitted to uh, one. You know, they admitted to one, but at least they admitted it. There was a defector pro wouldn't program. Wouldn't it be funny, interesting if they admitted that Oswald was one of that group? Uh, that would turn the whole thing into a different uh, light. Uh, part of the reason why some of these uh, documents after 55 years start s still aren't all out it, there's probably no smoking gun about assassinations, but there may be some Oswald uh, guns that actually start to smoke. Anything showing Lee Oswald was it a yep. CIA asset yep. or an agent yep. in any way yep. is going to raise a lot of alarm bells right. about the Kennedy assassination. From what I remember reading somewhere, and this isn't uh, officially obtained, but after the assassination, someone said about a small U-Haul worth of uh, Oswald documents were destroyed by intelligence. Wow. They, they wanted to get rid of all that stuff to have any anything getting getting back to him. That's incredible. So he goes to Russia. He's not there long. He gets married to Marina. Yeah. How long was he in Russia, actually? Uh, he was in Russia till I believe 1962. Oh wow! Uh, he was so there. He worked. Years. Yeah. He at first. Uh, because the idea was they actually, uh, I think, uh, I, I think the actual uh, carrot and stick that they wanted the Soviets to go after him on was his radar operator uh, stuff. And they were willing to let him give information to them, to uh, the so Soviets, whether it was some of it was real, some of it was fake. But that was, the idea was he, he got to the point where he suddenly got a cushy apartment and a place in Minsk, if I said that right, where mm. someone needs, someone has to have some pull, to, pull to get that. He had a pretty good job in a, a factory, which uh, a lot of uh, the Russians would want, and he lived in a place. So, meaning at some point they must have bought some of his uh, uh, things that he had so sold them. You mean wait? He he actually would have sold intelligence to the Soviets. Right. Well, I would imagine the Americans would have planned that all along with them. I like would you, think if you're going to get anything, you've got to give. Right, yeah, would have planned okay. that all along. And just a side note, I spoke with Oswald's uh, uh, 
his, uh, his Marine room roommate, Jim Botella, uh, from El Toro Marine Base uh, in 1959, last year. Uh, he's a retired California Wait, judge. Wait, you said 1959 last year. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I oh, spoke to Jim Botella last year, and his roommate was in 1959. <laughs> gotcha, okay. And uh, I was really interested what, uh, what he said. A very nice gentleman. Uh, he talked about Oswald being a very nice guy, mm -hmm. quiet guy, didn't talk much. He said, very smart. That's the one thing. Very, very smart. Okay. And uh, when... Uh, the word got out that after he left the Marines and that he had gone over to Russia, uh, his u unit and all that, there was hardly any activity at all about investigators come to check out this Oswald guy who has trying to defect, or we'll just use the term defect. He said, right. we all f figured, meaning him and his Marine buddies thought, He's, he's working for the U.S. He's that is, doing that a is mission. why they aren't. Yeah, he's on a mission. So there was no investigation of his old buddies to find Just out what he was up to? Nothing what he would have expected. He said he, there, there may have been someone that had come by and asked a couple of questions, but nothing which would have happened if it was the real deal. You would think a defector, even of a young guy, he'd had security clearances. He oh. knew quite a few things. That would be yep. a very right. serious matter. Right. Okay. So then he, come, why did he come back incidentally? Did, the only thing that I vaguely remember is that the Soviets were maybe wise to the fact that he was engaging in some espionage. Is that possible? Did they send him back or did he come back of his own volition? Uh, he came back at his own volition uh, and that may have been it. There, there, really there's no clear, clear answer whether the mission was over, whether he wasn't getting anywhere uh, okay. with uh, they, uh, I think the Russians may have always suspected that he was. Uh, I would uh, think there. so. Yeah, and what uh, so. the one the big event that uh, that that had happened while he was over there that had never got linked was the shooting down of Gary Powers. I was thinking and the that same was thing. A, a radar. That's thing. May 1960, and this was America had been flying U-2 aircraft over the Soviet Union for several years by then. These were the ultimate spy planes, 80,000 feet. The Russians knew all about them. They could not, they did not have the ability to shoot them down. And so it was an open secret. And the American pilot, Gary Power, was over Soviet territory and they shot him yeah. down in 1960. Yeah. It was a huge international uh, controversy. And Oswald was in the Russia Soviet at this time, in the Soviet Union. With top secret information about radar uh, and oh. things about that. So those two could have Wait been a second. Had he gone there before Powers was shot down? Yes. It was there. So that was... It's Those two have never been linked up definitively. What? I had heard Gary Powers Jr. speak, who uh, is very impressive. And uh, according to him, Alan, Alan Dulles never forgave his father for not killing himself. Uh, they, yeah. they were on a mission. That he's, he's got a pill. And right. the fact he didn't kill himself... Gary Powers uh, was... That was the idea. If you got shot down, you're dead. You yeah. kill yourself. Yeah. And he didn't do it. And, uh, uh, and But what you're saying, what I never thought yeah. about this, yeah. is that Oswald himself, possible connection to this. Possible In, connection. If he yeah. gave up sensitive radar capabilities to the Russians, yeah. they might have been able, what, to track the U-2 more effectively, Some perhaps, best. and shoot it down. Right, right. <gasps> but, but there's no indication, and yeah. well, I think it, by design, uh, Oswald uh, may have been, he had to have been given uh, some information to give to them in order to ingratiate himself uh, to uh, the exactly. Russians there, and so that was all part part of it. There's but uh, give him the, the yeah. U two airplane. Oh, I mean, my I goodness, that's a bit of a high price. Yeah. Uh, or so, oh, and that yes, <laughs> if that was. But th those two, that, that, that's never been tied up. Uh, people have no, looked but into that, but uh, good, it's just that's amazing. FYI, yeah. So he comes back in sixty two. Early in sixty two comes back. I do, I don't have the exact right. date on uh, on sixty two. Um, and I'm trying to remember. He goes back to New Orleans, I think. That's where he goes back. This to is where he hooks up with Guy Bannister. 
and yes. maybe ferry as well? That's the summer of 63 that all of that is, is going on. Okay. But the easy manner in which he was able to get back into the U.S., get a passport, get back, and the fact that virtually no one was interested in him as far as the FBI uh, when he first came back. He should have mm -hmm. had a party at the airport uh, waiting for him. But he got back in just like someone who, who they knew was coming back and still on the job. Uh, and this, I, is, this is after the Bay of Pigs. And the question is, uh, I, I think it was before the Cuban Missile cri Crisis that he was back. Yeah, the B Cuban Missile Crisis is October yes, of 62. So when he comes back, what? there's a couple of other things we discussed. Yeah. We talked about, uh, we should get into the theme of, what is it, Dr. Mary's Monkeys? Dr. Mary's Dr. Monkey. Dr. Mary's Monkeys. Yeah. We, that's interesting. And then there's the whole element of him potentially yeah. spying on the Cubans or, or infiltrating right. the Cubans uh, after the Bay yeah. of Pigs as well. So what what's yeah. the order? How does what is what does he do yeah. Yeah. when he gets back in nineteen sixty two? His girlfriend in the summer of sixty three was this Judith Very Baker. So he's married to Marina but he has a girlfriend. Yeah. In in the summer of sixty three. Yep. Okay. Yep. Those two just happened happened to hit it off. Right. And uh, he appears. And to you be, interviewed her. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, she is. She was interviewed by uh, uh, by sixty minutes. They uh, investigated her for thirteen months. Uh, reportedly, the most expensive and longest investigation uh, ever by sixty minutes and Don Don Hewitt. Uh, <laughs> and they were checking. And it came in because of. Dr. Mary M Mary's M monkey, that author who did that, whose name uh, is escaping me right right now, but he told them uh, when he started to tell them some things, you you ought to interview this Judith Berry mm -hmm. Baker, and because that she's she was the missing link in the summer of '63. There must have been some other assistant that knew what they were doing that was de dealing with these. Uh, mice and the cancer re research that was being done uh, under the aus auspices of this famous Dr. Alton Alton Oshner, uh and uh, Dr. Mary Sher Sherman. So can you back up a little bit and explain Oswald's connection to this? So he comes back and what is this research going on? Uh, the research going on, uh, it also involves D David Ferry because a whole bunch of mice were at his apartment uh, and that this was uh, Mary, Dr. Mary Sherman and Dr. Alton Oshner have the Oshner Clinic of where he's doing this cancer research mm -hmm. and also was doing a bunch of re research on polio vaccines and, and preparing that. That's a whole different different story. But uh, Oshner is like uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, or Donald Men Menzel. You know, you just think he's uh, an astronomer and he teaches somewhere. Once you get into his background, it goes way back to World War II and top intelligence connections and all sorts of top secret. That's what mm -hmm. Dr. Alton Ashen is once you go back. Okay. So he's in the community. And w some of the side research that he's doing is, uh, is this fast-acting cancer that could be used as a weapon for intelligence. So if you can in, inject someone with cancer and they get cancer and die, it's a lot better and easier and less trouble than shoot, shooting them in the back of the right. head and like that. And this uh, Judith Very Baker, she's all over the newspapers uh, when, when she was born, or uh, uh, when, when she's back in high school as having on her own doing this research because her grandmother died of cancer and she found a way to speed up cancer in mice. They figured if you can speed it up, you can slow it down, but they were really interested. So Dr. Oshner uh, had invited her to uh, New Orleans for, for the summer uh, of 1963 to work under him and then uh, he was going to get her into medical school. And she and, was Oswald's 
girlfriend, this woman? Right, correct. Amazing. And the work that he had her doing was the side work, not work out in the front and working with patients. They had thought she's right, she's young, you can uh, sort of manipulate her, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the way she looks back on it, when she got off the bus at the bus station, this uh, young, fairly good looking guy was there that just happened to run into her, Lee Oswald, and he thinks she was the, he was the handler that was put uh, on uh, her to guide her through this process. He was the one that, had, that, that actually introduced her to Alton Oshner and Oswald. Dr. Mary Sherman, yes, who, I mean, it's amazing the connections that this low life uh, person has. That he supposed, yes, supposedly that low life. He supposedly has. So he meets Judith, he introduces her to Oshner, and that whole research community, Oshner takes right. her, and she becomes his assistant, right. protege. Yep. And they're working on this fast acting cancer for the intelligence community. Correct. So Oswald's okay. involved in that. Oswald's involved in that. It's easy to use Oswald. He is so highly cleared with all classification stuff. He's in the loop and all this stuff. Now, uh, Judith Ferry Baker doesn't get the full story, mm -hmm. but as she understands it and had learned from Oswald during the summer and probably pillow talk that it was his understanding they were going to develop uh, the cancer, uh, get it all developed. He was going to be the person because of his defector connections to get to Cuba and to pass it off to someone who was going to get it and uh, give it to Castro. That was sort of... Oh, the, they were going to give Castro a fast-acting cancer. A fast, yeah. They had already been wor working, remember, with the, uh, the mafia to do uh, some, you know, the assassinations uh, stuff, and that's what the the, the, the mafia hearing. before the Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Uh, Cuba was basically a mafia island. Correct. I mean, they ran Cuba. Uh, when Castro's revolution came, the mafiosos were probably the most angry of all the groups all the over losing a billion plus dollar oh. industry out of Havana. Exactly, and yeah. they wanted it back. And the the U.S. government wanted Castro out. The mafia wanted yeah. Castro out. Those two were working. For sure. And, uh, okay, so that's that's an interesting connection. Is there anything more that comes out of that whole medical connection that Oswald had, or is it scientific? Is there more? Uh, that that seems to be significant. Right there. Oh, that's very sig significant yeah. in that the other. Uh, uh, you're probably aware that uh, Oswald got into a tiff on the corner of uh, a New Orleans street where they got arrested. He's handing out these leaflets, uh, hands off Cuba. Is that what yeah, that was? Yes, and it happens. It's like a fake political action group. Yeah. He's like a, a fake lobby, essentially. Right. He, you know, pro Castro yeah. leaflets and, on the and, corners. Of and New a few of them happen to have 544 Camp Street on it, which it wasn't supposed to because it identified where Guy Bannister's office was. Guy Bannister, high level FBI agent, close with Hoover. Yeah. Uh, very close, yeah. He slight, was, politically slightly to the right of Mussolini. Correct. You know, very like yep. hardcore right, right wing U.S. Yep. Uh, in law enforcement at that time. And here's Oswald yep. sharing an office with a different address. Correct. To, to yeah. Guy Bannister. They portrayed this very yep. nicely in the movie JFK the movie. Uh, Correct. all those years ago. And David Ferry was constantly at Guy Bannister's office that summer. So you got Bannister, Ferry, and, and Oswald. Oswald. All together Correct that there. summer of '63. Of '63, that's a very the summer of '63 in uh, uh, the JFK assassination is very important because a lot of stuff is going on there. What was Oswald's mission? Was I mean, we have to get to who was planning yeah. the assassination and how this comes in. But what's Oswald about, and what's Ferry about, and what's Bannister about at this time? Would you say? Uh, right now, Ferry is the pilot for Carlos Marcello, the private pilot who flies him around at various uh, things, doing some missions for... Explain Carlos Marcello. Marcello is the mafia chieftain uh, who is in charge of the New Orleans and Dallas area. He's the big... Right. He's the... Uh, uh, 
uh, Santos Traficante. Tra- Tra- Traficante. Yeah, he's Lieutenant Florida. Probably, and right. Sam Giancana is in Chicago. Chicago. Correct. So. Oh, so Marcelo is got his own territory, yep. New Orleans, basically, yep. in that he, region. He's important because his, his territory is Dallas. So he wasn't Traficante's lieutenant, I got that oh, wrong. Oh, yeah. R- he's on his own. Right, right, yeah. Mar- Marcello's very These powerful. These are big guys. And Ferry was his yep. pilot. Uh, correct. Huh. Yeah, so these, there's, the connections are all there. <laughs> and there, it's, it gets better. And all, Bannister, yeah. was, was Bannister uh, retired yeah. formally at that time? Uh, he, was, he was no longer an FBI agent. He was a private detective, but yeah. a retired FBI agent. Right. But he was working out of this office and doing side work for the FBI and intelligence on various stuff. And also... And just happening to share an office with Ferry. Yes. It, it just it, so happens. Uh, yeah. It's, it, the connections are wild. And so, uh, and Oswald's up there. And what there, on earth is Oswald doing with these guys? Uh, he's part of the an, the anti Castro group that is going out to Lake Pontchartrain and training these uh, anti Castro Cuban rebels uh, and stuff, and to prepare for the next invasion. Next Bay of Pigs. That was going to go on. Yes, the next they Bay, did of Bay of Pigs. Pigs. They did Operation yeah. Mongoose. That got shut down by the Kennedys. Yep. When they learned Correct. about it, Mongoose was yeah. basically a follow-up to Bay of Pigs to screw with the Cuban economy, do terrorist acts, uh, tamp- poison the sugar exports, from what I remembered learning. Uh, Kennedy brothers yeah. learned about that, shut it down, yeah. and now this is yeah. up and running again, Right, you're saying. The, uh, the, the irony is, is, for the most part, Lee Oswald is in the anti-Castro forces doing all of this. That's why this fight on the cor- corner, as Judith Barry Baker said, oh, uh, that was a setup. Everyone knew that. So what was the fight? Can you describe what the happened? Fight, uh, because he was passing out pro-Castro uh, leaflets there, you know, join my uh, fair play for Cuba yeah, right. stuff, of which there's one member, uh, Lee Oswald, and then one of the anti-Castro people was supposed to come up, get in a fight, and those two were uh, were supposed to get on the news. They actually had some news. And he got on stuff. the news. He got on the news. And because For that of, reason? Yep. And because of that, uh, because of that, there was actually a debate on the, on the radio a few days later between uh, Lee Oswald, uh, this poorly spoken, I keep on going back to this, what a uneducated lowlife he is and uh, he's on this radio uh, stuff with the name of uh, I forget uh, Carlos Bring- Bringuir I, I think oh, that was the name, the name he had no 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 that was the name of oh, the guy, the guy with the fight po- yeah fought, that was the him. fight yeah of course what is uh, uh, well well known in the community is when uh, Oswald got arrested uh, who does he call the uh, the regular bail bond- bondsman no he calls the local FBI agent who comes over, spends an hour, put them in the cell, gets a whole bunch of notes from them, uh, leaves, and then Oswald is let go. And uh, uh, we'd, we'd like to find out uh, what those notes said uh, with the, F, the FBI agent, but darn it, they got destroyed. You know, it's amazing. By accident. Yes. Obviously, yes, just some oversight. That, yeah, clearly. some giant shredding machine, <laughs> uh, That all this other stuff. So. That's uh, so we're still summer of sixty three. We're still here. in the summer of sixty three. Okay, uh, you I, you really need yeah. to lead this, but I I keep thinking like there was definitely plans yeah. afoot yeah. to kill the president, and is this true? I had heard at least at one point, uh, Kennedy was going to be speaking not just in Dallas but prior to that in Miami, and I had learned that there were plans to kill him and to, sh- to assassinate him in Miami, but he ended up mm-hmm. not going there. And so it was destined for Dallas. Is this something that Correct. you've heard about? Okay. Yeah, there's two plots that were going. And am I jumping too far ahead no, here? No, no, that's, I probably ought to just uh, back up and uh, say that both J- Judith Barry ba- Baker and Lee Oswald mm-hmm. in the summer of 63, their main jobs uh, officially, we're working at the Riley Coffee Company, which has 
uh, as their boss there that was in charge of it was a former FBI agent, believe it or not. These FBI agents yeah. leave their jobs and go, and uh, he had hired uh, her to do the personnel re records, and uh, uh, Oswald's job was always hard to find out because he was never there. The reason is her job was to fix the records and to cover for him as he's out doing go for work for all national. You have to wonder why she would need a cover job when she was uh, a medical student. Well, that was why would she need a cover at a coffee shop? Uh, well, no, not a coffee shop. Coffee, uh, the Riley Coffee com Company. Oh, I beg your pardon. Which is a coffee pretty company. big operation. Okay. Which apparently is well known in their owners, etc. Well connected to okay. the CIA. And just a quick, just a dovetail. The people, uh, Oswald's co-workers uh, at uh, the Riley Coffee co Company, uh, after the assassination, seven of them got jobs at Nassau. Okay. Afterwards, NASA. the idea was, was anyone that can testify about what Oswald was up to or not up to at that job. They were transferred out with cushy jobs uh, at N Nassau. That's the normal place. You work at the coffee company and you go to Nassau. It's astonishing, this and stuff. So you've, got, you've got FBI and CIA fingerprints on this by the summer of 63, and that's interesting oh. because uh, from everything that I had thought I know knew, Hoover of the FBI was very competitive with the CIA and was not on friendly terms. In fact, was really never on friendly terms with the CIA. He was jealous over the fact that in 1947 yeah. they took his whole South yeah. American, uh, Central American empire away. Hoover had had intelligence operations all through the Western mm -hmm. Hemisphere until the end of World War II. CIA yeah. comes, they take yeah. that. Uh, they were an upstart yeah. for him and he was notoriously non-cooperative with them, even into the early 70s with Nixon. So you've got Oswald connected with the FBI, clearly. You've got Guy Bannister, you've got Oswald g using the yep. FBI to get out of uh, jail. But this coffee yep. company yep. that Oswald's working for has got CIA connections. So is it likely or possible I don't know if we'll ever know this, that Oswald was working for the FBI, but actually infiltrating a CIA operation. Is that possible? Uh, like the Cubans yeah. who are continually working with the CIA, yeah. which they had to right. be, to go after Cuba, was this something that Hoover and the FBI were investigating yeah. from his angle and Oswald was in that whole mess? I Does would that make say, any sense? yeah, who, yeah, no, you're you're on the right track. Uh, just not to go forward, but in uh, January of '64, the Warren Commission had a secret uh, emergency me meeting where they were discussing the the transcript came out years li later. But the emergency meeting was they had verifiable information that Lee Oswald was officially an FBI informant number. 620, I mean, they actually had the number mm -hmm. and the the amount. He was getting a couple hundred bucks a month. So they were trying to deal with that, and this is explosive information. What are they going to do? The assassin is an FBI guy. So he was both an FBI informant doing stuff, but also working for either officially the, the CIA or the Office of, of Naval Intelligence. Uh, or or both. I mean, that's. But the idea was, as a defector, in the way that they had to make his files, his CIA 201 file that they call it, that was destroyed. It was. It, it's never been seen. Uh, they ad, they admit that that was de de destroyed and it was never seen. So so it's who, unlikely yeah. we're going to get to the bottom of that issue. As far unless there, yeah, there's still uh, bunches of documents that aren't. Out. Now you would right. think they would have destroyed that that uh, stuff, but I mean that they they really. But he was working for both. That's the thing. He was working for both, and yeah, not and necessarily. Hoover didn't necessarily know what the CIA was uh, was uh, 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 you know was doing in vice versa. That's it seems to me Hoover would want to know, and Oswald right. would have been his his man right. to do that. Okay. 
That, that's just okay. a theory. I mean, do you know that uh, Oswald went to the FBI office about uh, six days before the assassination and dropped, dropped off an envelope? No. No. Wow. Boy, that's, uh, I mean, that's amazing how that they fight. Uh, th uh, yeah. well, we have to come to that. Okay. Well, so yeah, that's. Walk us up to that oh, we get there. That's, okay. That's why. Well, it, it gets into the FBI aspect of it. So I'll just tell that uh, mm -hmm. now. That okay. is. Uh, big information because uh, what was in the envelope? Uh, the FBI admits in 1975, I think uh, uh, the FBI director's name was Gray, with his head down, he admitted the terrible FBI did something terrible uh, back in 1963. After the assassination, uh, the, uh, uh, the office, the, the guy who uh, who was in charge of the Dallas office, and it's impossible to think it could not have been done without Hoover, mm -hmm. who micromanaged everything uh, about this, was he says, we've got this note from Oswald we got a week before. What should we do, do with it? Destroy the note, flush it down the toilet, which he did, and Oswald's file with them. So they were, I mean, they, they had a file with, uh, like they had So with, Oswald gave something to the FBI office right. in Dallas. Yes. And we don't know what was in that file. James Hosty, the FBI field guy, says he opened it up and says uh, it was a threat. If you don't quit bothering my wife, I'm going to blow uh, the office up. Uh, that's what he said. The secretary said, I sort of peeked at it too, and... It sort of said something like that, but it, but it wasn't the same host, he said. The, the big thing is, is no one really knows what it said, but it very easily may have said there's an assassination plot coming up for uh, uh, JFK, because that's what they thought he was put over in Dallas for, was to infiltrate the, uh, the uh, uh, anti-Castro forces uh, that wanted to get back at uh, JFK. For this the is Bay what I always thought. Yeah, for the Bay, Bay, of, yeah. Bay of Pigs. So he was working in undercover. So what Hostie said is probably not true. Uh, probably not yeah. uh, true. The other, Jim Mars, uh, and, this, and this is Jim, Jim Mars, didn't put it in his book because he could never nail it down. But early in 64, when he was there, he, uh, he had found out from a couple of very good sources that uh, Oswald went to the Dallas police and left a note that said there's going to be an assassination attempt on JFK, and he signed it, uh, his, uh, 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 what was his uh, name, gosh, what was the phony name that he uh, oh, Oswald? had that he got the, uh, oh, golly. one of those I, I can't uh, things that, recall this either. yeah, and supposedly the FBI turned uh, the Dallas Police Police Department and everyone's locker upside down to find to make sure if that note it was gotten, so they had retrieved that, but it would seem likely that he left two, two, two notes. So uh, he was warning Warning. The FBI that an assassination attempt was right. coming. It was was coming. He was attempting to to stop it, right. according to what Jim Mars learned back in 1964. 1964. He, he was, was living guy. back there, yeah. and he was a young student right. who was uh, a journalism student doing some of his uh, own stuff ba back then. It's amazing. He was on top of it right from the beginning. Amazing. He w yeah. Did you ever meet him? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. He's yeah. A yes, extraordinary I did. Oh, man. Great, great uh, guy. Uh, Always loved him. And uh, just to uh, further, uh, uh, you were on to the Miami plot, yes, which got broken up. Well, there was a Chicago plot. Did uh, you know about that? I did not. I think that was November second, where where JFK, because of it, canceled the trip. He was going to Dallas. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He was going to Chicago, uh, and news of uh, uh, some. Uh, Hispanic looking Cuban types were in a hotel room they found guns uh, or they knew of guns and the tip for this went to the Secret Service there and Abraham Bol Bolden mm -hmm. uh, who was the first black Secret Service agent 
uh, said that the tip came in from an anonymous person who, whose name was only identified as Lee. Oh, wow. Well, so that's... So, so Oswald, yep. far from being yep. the trigger man, is the one who's actually running around Do trying it. to save Kennedy right. yep. over and over. Right. And once they found out about this plot in Chicago along, uh, along Kennedy's route, they have identified a ex-Marine, supposedly with psychological pro problems, that was working there and was going to have a gun there. They they know who the Oswald was going to be. Oh, so they had a Patsy they actually set have up. his name. They had a, a different Patsy. guy. They had a Patsy set up. So if his but, Chicago had gone down, that would have been the assa yeah, assassin. They, yeah. So they were they were they were stalking JFK at this time. Clearly, they had to get an. In we have to find it. We have to ask who the they are when we get to that. Uh, uh, to the oh, extent okay. possible, right? Uh, but we're still walking oh, through this whole are, part of this. Is we're getting <laughs> deep. Yeah. Uh, it's so vast. There's so many little. Ten I mean, there's other. I mean, I had to bring up the, the Riley Coffee Company because it it really fits in. It's I important. Mean, yes. yes, yes, it's important. I mean, they would be able. To do that with the young student and stuff, she's coming uh, to really this for is the Judith, way to get uh, yeah Judith very ba ba Baker Baker yes you know it's one of those things where you can get all of the background on her is all in the newspapers because she's such a brilliant student with all these awards because of this cancer research and and stuff and then after November twenty second of sixty three she falls off the face of the earth wisely. Uh, David right. Ferry uh, called her and told her, "You've got to turn vanilla. You've got to blend it. You've got you cannot say a word or anything." And uh, uh, every yes, well, yes. Ferry died after that. Uh, lots of people. Oh, died after uh, many, that. many. Yeah, they were as, all, all gone. As long as you weren't going to be part of someone testifying or really in the loop doing some things that could hurt hurt them, as long as you were there, you were you were okay. Right. And plus. Uh, she she was with uh, just a further uh, there. She was with Oswald when they ran in to to Carlos Marcelo Ooh. because uh, uh, Oswald's uncle's name is Dutz Moret, who was uh, a well known bookie type in mm -hmm. New Orleans, and Oswald was doing some side work for him, running some stuff uh, that he does in Marcelo knew. Uh, Oswald as a little kid and uh, also who took Judy uh, and Lee to dinner went one night was a Dallas nightclub owner uh, that she only knew as Sparky Sparky Rubenstein she knew him uh, the rest of the world knows him as Jack Ruby uh, and she oh. says they she Oswald says, and Ruby knew each other uh, since Oswald was a little kid uh, uh, Ruby would come over and He'd deal with his uncle and stuff like that. So they had Ferry Oswald, uh, 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 Ru Ruby. They knew each other, and uh, uh, that's the kind of. As a, as a side note here, so yeah. Oswald was married to Marina, but the fact that he's uh, got a girlfriend, no one seemed to care. Is Marina part of any of this? Going no, on? Is she just no. happy to be in America. What, she's what's happy her deal? to be in America, and real. It doesn't know anything about that but those two aren't really getting along and aren't really going to have the best marriage and right in how that marriage came to be over in russia because she is uh was the niece of a pretty major either a kgb official or a top someone that's pretty just it's a yes i mean there, there's a she connection there and that that's sort of why she was able to get out uh of russia easier and Things okay. like like that, but th those two were not necessarily getting along. I mean, there's so much more stuff. All right, right. So, so anyway, uh, Oswald warns off the assassination yep. attempt in Chicago. Then comes Miami. Is that right? Uh, yes. Around that that is second. Um, I don't know that case very well, but I remembered learning that this was going down. Yeah. Somehow Kennedy got warned yeah. off and did not. Did not go. He I went, think. but he didn't do the motorcade. Ah, okay. He didn't do the ma the motorcade, but I he see. did go and uh, speak. Is that so? The opportunity did not arise. Right, right. And this that. was a, a Cuban uh, operation, I think. 
Uh, we, I, we I don't, don't really know okay. on that, but you can probably surmise some of that. But I mean, again, the anti-Castro Cubans are working with the FBI and ex-FBI people and CIA people. Uh, and uh, this is so, all connected. So not FBI plus yeah. CIA. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and again, ex unofficially FBI stuff. Yeah, unofficially, unofficially or yeah. or yeah. in quotes, unofficially. Right. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Then comes Dallas, and I just I I hate interrupting you because you're so good at this. But yeah. I just remembered in the mid '70s when the um, the House of Representatives reinvestigated right. this, they subpoenaed a woman who was a Cuban. She was part of the whole Cuban anti-Castro crowd, all these assassins. And they, she yeah. testified, I hope I'm getting this right, that they they all went to Dallas, they were summoned or they were brought to Dallas. She meets all the boys, all of her buddies in a hotel room and they're breaking out the guns. Right. And that's when she realizes, sorry guys, I love all of you, but I'm not part of yeah. this. And she opted out. And that's when Kennedy was killed. Is that something you recommend? that's part yes yes and i if i heard the name of the uh i can i can just about hear the name right. but yes that, she was that's like the part one of a woman right in the group is fr from yep. what i think i remember yep and that's uh i mean as we go on we said no one's really ever nailed down who all the shooters were and who they were working for where there was some really uh top level mafia people uh, from out of the country mm -hmm. uh, or uh, if it was the anti-Castro people that were very well trained, some of the well shooters. Sure. That, that's really never been, in fact, some of the uh, top people that are in the conspiracy aspect of it probably didn't even know, know them themselves. They just knew good, solid people were going to be there. And if they got caught don't worry about it. We've got the Dallas police taken care of. We have the FBI taken care of. We'll take care of it. So they weren't really that concerned uh, uh, about that. This concludes part one of my interview with Philip Lavelle. Make sure you catch the rest of this fantastic discussion. Philip will have more to say about Lee Harvey Oswald including more about the mysterious and important summer of 1963, as well as the activities of other key players. We will then move on to the events of November 22nd, 1963, and everything connected to it. Make sure you don't miss it. Thanks for listening. And remember, while we learn and grow and search for the truth, let's be good to each other. Later. <laughs>